to everybody who registered after we are finished here. Uh, so we'll go through our um, introductions and then we'll have some questions at the end and a poll. And then everybody can get on with their day. We really just appreciate you uh, joining us. A couple housekeeping notes before we get started. If you notice next to your name on our pane, there is a hand and there is a question mark button. If you notice that question mark button, please click on that question mark button if you have any questions throughout the webinar. And we will in indicate your question in the uh, text box that opens up and we'll read off that question at the end of the webinar uh, to the panelists. And I'm so happy to be joined by uh, Clear9 today, Craig Jacobs, ROI Consulting, Bob Richter, um, American Payment Solutions, pa Patty Benitez, dear friend of mine, Avalara, John Litwa, One Software Solutions, Sean Boros, and V Technologies, uh, Matt St. John. So I'm just going to give it a little bit here. I see more people coming in. And then we'll get started. All right. So just a little bit about the companies. Uh, we have, as I said, Clear9, and if you're familiar with Clear9, they um, have integrated, very tightly integrated web solutions for Sage 100. Craig Jacobs is the founder of Clear9, and he'll be speaking to us today um, about all the um, ways that he can integrate a, the, his uh, web solutions with Sage 100. Um, he's been working uh, with Sage products himself for years and years and years. I used to work for Sage back in uh, 2000 to 2005 and work side by side with uh, Craig for a few of those years. And he always was the go-to guy. I remember um, very knowledgeable about uh, all the Sage products, Sage 100 in particular. Uh, we have ROI Consulting with us, uh, who is a developer of uh, integrated third-party integrations, and it goes really nicely with the Clear9 uh, tightly integrated web solution, uh, the developer of NSYNC. I'm not sure if you've heard of NSYNC out there, but uh, it's pretty popular, and uh, lots of um, resellers and partners out there representing Sage 100 go to NSYNC for you know, any types of integrations that they might need. Um, it's a, uh, developed specifically for Sage 100. And then we have Avalara. I'm sure everybody's heard of Avalara out there. Uh, I think they're approaching a billion dollar uh, company. Um, and they automate sales tax compliance for the mid-market ERPs out there. Uh, so um, they're the big orange machine, if you've seen them, at trade shows, they'll pass out margaritas to you, and they just have a real personality. They um, have coined the phrase of making sales tax less taxing. And then we have American Payment Solutions, a market-leading credit card processing solution that can save you um, thousands and thousands of dollars in processing credit cards through Sage 100 sales order. Uh, and then we have ScanCo One Software Solution. Um, One Software Solution has merged with JDB and ACS, the uh, market leading multi bin solution for Sage 100, to form One Software Solution. So they are definitely the leading <coughs> warehouse management application for Sage 100. Excuse me, I have a little bit of a cold. <coughs> They've been leading since 1989. And um, they meet the needs of, of thousands of those uh, distribution and manufacturing companies who are using Sage 100. Uh, and they um, have innovative iOS, Android, and Windows interfaces um, that the warehouse can benefit from. Um, and Starship. Starship has been around for a very, very long time. They're a goal development partner. And they're the leading uh, producer of integrated shipping solutions for Sage, uh, Starship, and Shipgear. Uh, Starship is the flagship product, and Shipgear is more of a middleware solution. So it's more of an entry-level shipping software. So if you have any needs for shipping, um, definitely reach out to Starship, 
and they can probably address your needs from a budget and a um, automation standpoint. And then here's what we're going to be talking about today. We're going to be talking about how to automate sales order processing with all of these integrated solutions. And you know, it really becomes one workflow. And all of these companies work very nicely together to uh, bring you an automated solution. Uh, so uh, somebody would be somebody on the internet or a customer service person, as you see here, would be placing an order and that goes into Clear9, and then Clear9 takes that order, passes it over to ROI InSync, or ROI takes that information, and translates that information into Stage 100 sales order. This is all happening throughout in the, back, uh, in the background. And then um, American Payment Solutions and Avalara, American Payment Solutions will process the credit cards automatically, and Avalara will automatically automatically calculate the right sales tax for that order based on all the rules of that order and, sale, and all the sales tax uh, rules given in that um, particular location that that order is being placed. There's all kinds of laws around that. So it uh, makes that process, that manual tedious process of making sure you're uh, charging the right sales tax a lot less um, taxing. And then uh, the order goes in after all the sales order information is um, in Sage 100. It goes over to one software solution to automate the warehouse management uh, process of picking and packing and all the things that go into uh, fulfilling that order through one software solution. And then Starship takes that information from one software solution and automates the a selection of the perfect carrier for that order based on um, all the customer's information, the location, um, the budget the customer has for shipping, um, how long it will take for the order to get there, and picks the right carrier uh, to send that shipment through. And um, all of that information is written back to Sage 100 and now you can uh, go ahead and automate the invoicing process um, and accounts receivable. Um, and then American Payment Solutions can process the credit cards. Avalara can calculate the sales tax and make sure all of that stuff that came from the sales order is reflected on the invoice. And then that goes through ROI Consulting's InSync application in the background to populate Clear9's web interface so that um, all the shipment information and everything that was ever populated in Sage 100 is reflected back on the internet so that the customer can view all the details of their order and where it is in process to arriving on site. And so with that said, I'm going to go ahead and hand it over to Craig Jacobs, who is going to kick off the presentation. Craig? Oh, did we lose audio for Craig? I'm sorry about that. Too many there buttons you are. to click. Okay. So, <laughs> my name is Craig Jacobs. Thank I'm you, with Craig. Clear9, and thank you. I'm going to be taking you through our integrated e-commerce solution for Sage 100. Uh, we started uh, this project quite a long time ago, and the idea behind it was to create a modern web application that would seamlessly integrate with uh, Sage 100 because Sage 100 has a lot of you know, valuable information in it, and we thought, well, if we can leverage that information to create a customer-facing self-service portal, that would be a great thing. So we integrate tightly with a lot of the Sage 100 functionality, including um, uh, with customer management, inventory management, sales order processing, other features, and including uh, paperless office. So as we go through the demo, one of the things to keep in mind is that um, everything that you see related to customers or inventory documents, anything like that, that's all managed exclusively within Sage 100. So there's no double entry. There's no you know, changing descriptions of items on the website versus inside of Sage. Everything is done exclusively within the Sage 100 application. So with that, let's take a brief uh, tour 
of the Clear9 application. One of the first things I like to show in initially, just so that get this kind of out of the way, is that the application is completely responsive. So it's you know cell phones, tablets, laptops, all of that fun stuff, um, which is of course expected of an application um, uh, at this point in time. So with that, we'll just dive right into the catalog. So this is a pretty standard catalog view. It's one of our standard templates where we have inventory items organized into categories, subcategories. So these are uh, categories, all of which are managed within the InSync module inside of Sage 100. These are Sage 100 inventory items that have been activated. Okay. I can drill into an item. This is what we call our item detail page. We have the item description. This is the main item image uh, that is specified inside of uh, item maintenance within Sage. And pricing. So depending upon how the pricing for the item is set up, we might have price breaks, we might have promotional pricing, price code pricing, pricing by total quantity price breaks. However you're using pricing in Sage, the website understands that and uh, presents the same pricing structure. Uh, availability, um, long description, web details, uh, we have um, related items that we can set up through Sage, so you can relate items together. And uh, optionally, documents. So maybe you, you're in, in an industry where you need to provide material safety data sheets or things like that. You can set all that stuff up uh, within Sage as well. So I want to direct your attention to the pricing, because this is a, a, a fairly major feature of the application. You'll note that we have four price breaks, and the base price is 175 So I'm going to go log in as a customer and let's see what happens to the pricing. Okay, so I'm logged in um, as American Business Futures and they actually have price level one pricing so that's what we're seeing here. So we have a different price breaks, a much lower standard price and discounts from there. Okay, just to kind of demonstrate the, how we interact with the pricing. If they had customer specific pricing the same thing would apply. So now that I'm logged in as a customer, I can go take a look at all their information. And we, we leverage quite a lot of information uh, from the Sage 100 application. You know, customer summary information, order history, invoice history, open orders, et cetera. So for example, uh, customer information. So we have you know, address and contact information, stuff like that. This is the summary tab which has you know, dates of payments, balances, financial information, if they're over their credit limit, aging. Okay. Uh, this is orders tab. This shows both active and completed orders. And it, you can drill into an order, and you can see the bill to, the ship to, you know, how it was shipped, all of the line items on the order. And if it's a completed order and it has been shipped, and there's a tracking number, you can actually just track the package right from here, and it'll take you out and tell you what the status of the package is. Okay. And then uh, we also have historical invoices view. And again, we, we can turn these on or off for a specific site depending upon the nature of the site and what particular information you want to expose to your customers. And just like the sales orders, you can drill into uh, invoice detail, see package tracking information. Okay. Open invoices. Uh, in this particular view, you can see the invoices, and you can drill back into uh, to see all the order detail, but you can also see, for example, all the transactions, so the invoice, the credit memos, adjustments, payment applications. Okay? And this is a new feature that we're, um, we're just in the process of rolling out, which, we, which is online bill pay. So this allows your customers to come to your website um, and pay open invoices with a credit card. So you can see we have a running total up here. So as they select or deselect invoices to pay, it keeps a running total. And then when they're ready, they can click Pay Now. They can come in here and enter their credit card information and process a payment, which will then create a cash receipts entry in Sage against those invoices. So this, this is a standard feature of our application, but it, we, can, you know, we can turn it on or off depending upon your requirements. And another integration point that we have that um, I like to show is paperless office. So if you're using paperless office within Sage um, to generate um, uh, invoices and, and sales order PDFs for storage, 
we can synchronize those to the website so that when a customer is on the website, they can retrieve those documents. Uh, so they don't have to call customer service and say, can you fax me an invoice? I can't find it. All that stuff. Okay. And then finally, with in inquiry, the last thing I wanted to show is that we have purchase history. So this is every item the customer has ever purchased through Sage. Okay, and it's important to make the point here that when we're looking at orders or we're looking at history or whatever, this isn't just for orders that came in from the website. This is every order in Sage. So it doesn't matter if it came into the website, was typed in through sales order entry, came in through EDI or some other import method. If it's in Sage, the customer can view it on the website. So um, let's take a look at the ordering process. We have a number of different ways to actually process an order. So the first way, the simple way, would be um, to simply find an item that you like and click Add to Cart. We uh, don't have to go all the way to the item detail page to add an item to the cart. You can add it right from the category page. And on every page up here in the masthead is a persistent shopping cart that shows you, you know, what's in your cart. You can update quantities here or even delete items. Okay. And then we have another way uh, to get items into the cart that often appeals to business-oriented websites, and that would be order entry. So, you know, if you have some customers that simply just want to come and, and bang an order into the system and they don't want to browse the catalog, if they have a reasonably good understanding of your part numbers or descriptions, or if you're using customer alias part numbers in your system, they can come here and they can just start typing uh, a part number, and it'll find it whether or not that, whether or not that text exists in the part number or the alias or the description and they can simply come in here and they can find items they would like and they can add it. So they can build this order over time and it'll remember what's going on and then when they're ready to go, they can just come back here and click update to shopping cart and it will process all this through into the shopping cart. And one final thing that I really wanted to show you is we have salesperson functionality. So you can set up users for our application that are, that are salespeople. And so I will log in as a salesperson. Nu er det short sæson, eller nu skal det blive lidt varmere i i vejret, ikke? Men nu. Okay, so now that I'm logged in as a salesperson, I can go take a look at the catalog that we were just looking at. So here's the item I'd like to purchase, but wait a minute, that's the standard price. Okay, it's warning me here that hey, you're logged in as a salesperson, but you haven't selected a customer. So we'll go ahead and do that now. Use the, um, the venerable ABF customer. And now that I've selected that customer, you'll see that I now see their pricing. Okay, so I'll go ahead and add that to my cart. And uh, we get a helpful little checkout link that just pops up here. So we'll just click that. And we'll go straight to the checkout page. So um, we'll add a PO for later tracking purposes. Uh, if I'm logged in as a salesperson, I can optionally make this a quote. Okay. Now, since I'm logged in, it knows all my on-file billing information. So here it is. Now, if I were to make edits to this, not only would it update the sales order, but it would optionally update the customer inside of Sage. Okay. So now, it also knows about all of my on-file shipping addresses. Okay. So I can do same as billing. I can add a new address. I can pick any of these on-file shipping addresses. And if I were to make a change to the ship to address, again, it would reflect on the sales order, but would also be pushed into Sage and update the, uh, the ship to address. Now, if the customer in Sage has a default ship to address, that's what this will be defaulted to on the checkout page. And likewise, if they have a default shipping method, that's what this will default to. We have a lot of ways we can calculate shipping on the website. Uh, we can do flat rate shipping or based on order totals or any kind of schedule like that. In this particular case, we're actually going out in real time to UPS and getting rates uh, based on the destination of the order and uh, the uh, weights and volumes that are set up inside of inventory management. Okay, And also down here, you'll note we have sales tax. 
So we're all uh, the Clear9 application is Avatax certified, and so we have Avatax uh, Avatax's services integrated into the website, so that um, when you're adding things to your cart and checking out, it's calculating sales tax in real time, and it's doing that based on uh, the address that things are shipping to, the tax classes on the items. So we're actually looking at the individual items to get their tax classes to determine what we're going to send over to get uh, to get taxed, as well as if you have set up any exemptions in Sage. So maybe you've got a client that has exemptions on file. It takes that into account as well. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and go to the next page. So here's our validation page. So you know, here, this is who's paying. This is where we're shipping it to. First order number, etc. Here's the items, sales tax and shipping. At this point, I would just simply enter my payment information. Make sure the card's not expired, and submit the order. So what's happening now is we're going out to American Payment Solutions to get a credit card authorization. We're actually taking the credit card and putting it into their secure vault, and we no longer actually have the card. We just have the token, and um, We've generated some email notifications, and at this point in time, the InSync module inside of Sage is pulling the order in to create a sales order in Sage. So we're going to go over there and have a look at that. Okay, so what this is telling us is that the, the, uh, the credit card authorization for this order has already been processed, which that happened on the website, and we sent that in to the order. Here's the shipping uh, method that we selected. Here's the PO number that we typed in on the website. Here's our billing information. Here's the ship to address we selected. The item we ordered with quantity, and that's the price that we saw on the website. Here's the shipping uh, amount the website calculated, as well as the sales tax. And then finally, on the credit card tab, we'll see that we have a payment amount, uh, authorization number, uh, authorization amount, date, time, and transaction ID that came back from American Payment Solutions. So now we have an order that's sitting inside of Sage that's ready to be processed uh, through standard uh, processing means, and it has a <clears throat> calculated tax and a credit card authorization. So with that, I would like to turn it over to Patty from American Payment Solutions to um, talk more about uh, integrated credit card processing. Thank you very much, Craig. Um, Adrian, thank you so much for putting this webinar together for us. We really do appreciate your help with this. And I'd like to thank everyone who's also attending the presentation. The one thing you're going to notice throughout the presentation is the fact that we're here to teach you how to better take advantage of the integrated products between the different developers that are involved in this webinar. Um, it's a very seamless integration, and it's more so that you can take advantage of our features and functionality, and you can decide which option to choose from at the end of the day. Um, so, Craig, while you were processing the credit card within Sage 100, in the background, American Payment Solutions was actually taking over and trying to qualify a transaction for level three processing. Um, a little bit about American Payment Solutions. We have been in the credit card processing industry for well over 25 years. We process for thousands of merchants throughout the United States as well as Canada. Our customers' monthly processing volume ranges from 2,000 I'm sorry, um, I think, I, I'm not sure if I was, uh, could everybody hear me? Craig, can you hear me? I can hear, I think I, I think I clicked the wrong button, sorry about that. Oh, that's okay. Um, we offer our customer support team at absolutely no charge to you, 24-7, 365 days a year. We refuse to use an automated system which means that you will always have a live person on the other side of the line should anything, um, should you encounter any issues with credit card processing. We also offer assistance with PCI compliance at absolutely no charge. We do not charge for a module, installation, implementation, training, setup, uh, or a yearly maintenance or support fee. So I just wanted to point that out before we jump into what exactly is happening with your transaction. What you see on the screen right now is the American Payment Solutions portal. 
One of the things that many people enjoy about this portal is the sorting criteria. And you can see you have several options as far as how you can find information about any particular transaction. Not only the ones that I'm drilling down on, but the ones that are on the list as well. And what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to show you exactly how the transaction that, oh, I apologize for that, that Craig had just processed looks within the portal itself. Um, I was talking to you a little bit about level three processing. Level three processing basically is offered by Visa and MasterCard. And what happens is they, they will cut the rate almost in half. Um, so they'll cut it down to 0.50 or 1.50 depending on the transaction. And all we have to know is that it's a business to business or business to government transaction with a company uh, within the continental US. As long as that criteria is met and we provide 13 to 16 required fields to Visa and MasterCard, we can potentially try to qualify each transaction for level three processing, therefore guaranteeing the lowest rate possible in the industry. You don't have to worry about filling in the fields that Visa and MasterCard require because you're processing through Stage 100 and we basically take the fields from Stage 100 and provide them to Visa and MasterCard. This is the transaction that Craig has just processed using his uh, integrated e integrated internet and e-commerce site. You'll notice that we're referencing the sales order number that he was working on and it'll indicate it's pending capture because it is a pre-authorization. We will also now provide you with a transaction ID. If you click on the transaction ID, you're also going to be able to see additional details regarding this particular transaction. And you can see all of the information is actually available for you at your fingertips. This transaction ID is also available within Sage 100 and the sales order that was just processed. You can see it right here. One of the things that American Payment Solutions added as part of a standard credit card processing transaction is the ability to auto email a particular email address that you can set up under the billing address for the card. So every time there is a credit card transaction process, this email address will receive a receipt. We've also extended functionality in regards to the amount of time a pre-authorization can stay valid. Um, we know that many people had a limiting seven days to have a pre-authorization exist. We've actually extended it where you can choose to have a pre-authorization live from seven to 30 days. So you can definitely decide how long that pre-authorization has to stay alive for you or for your client. And uh, the one last, before I, I hand it over to, to the folks at Avalera, at Avalera, I just want to mention that some of the required fields that Visa and MasterCard require for level three processing have to do with uh, shipping zip codes or customer zip code. Um, and those fields, as you probably know, Avalara verifies for you, so you don't have to worry about having to verify them on your own. Um, I'm going to go ahead and hand it over now to you, John. Thanks, Patty. And for those of you who might not be familiar, uh, Avalara is a technology company that automates sales tax calculations, exemption certificate management, as well as the file and remittance process. So there's nothing really fun uh, about sales tax. We're certainly not the most popular people at a cocktail party, but uh, the automation technology that we have is pretty exciting. Uh, we've been an OEM product with Sage for uh, just under a decade. Um, so what that means for the folks on the call today is that our product is tightly integrated and works very well with the different Sage platforms that are out there. Um, so, you know, we, I want to take a quick look back into that sales order um, that we were in earlier and really just touch into to three areas. One being that sales tax schedule that's in Sage 100. Uh, go into a little bit more detail about that address validation functionality that we just spoke to, and then just show you that sales order entry in and how that sales tax is calculated. Um, so first and foremost, the sales tax schedule ID 
you'll see that this is set to add attacks. So what we hear from customers is they have to research rates, research uh, product taxability, update these tables as the rates, rules, and boundaries adjust, and collect and manage the exemption certificates, and finally pick the correct schedule to apply to that customer. Uh, I think that everyone on the phone can agree that these activities add zero value uh, to the company as a whole. Sales tax is just that necessary evil of doing business, uh, and it's something that you have to do properly. Uh, so what we do is we set those tax schedules to have a tax, and you never have to research any of the rates, rules, and boundaries associated with your goods and services ever again. Basically, this is triggering the, the system to rather speak than it, to its native functionality. It's sending over transactional data to Avalara, and Avalara is making that tax determination based off that information. All of this is happening within the t in a tenth of a second. Um, so it's a real-time tax call, uh, and it can save a lot of time, effort, and aggravation uh, from an internal standpoint. Uh, we looked at the address validation functionality. When we speak to our address validation, what happens is we scrub these addresses to a U.S. postal format. You'll see that our technology differs in the fact that during that scrub, we're pulling the longitude and latitude coordinates of that address and dropping that point on a map. All of our technology is based off of taxing jurisdictions. We do not utilize that zip code functionality because zip codes are associated with the U.S. Postal Service and taxing jurisdictions do not always align um, with those uh, boundaries that are set um, for the Postal Service. So we're able to get that rooftop level accuracy. When we look at things that are uh, put in as far as order entry, you are adding your items and these items are going to be associated with tax content codes on, the, on Avalara's side of the house. We look at line by le line level detail so that we know is the product or the service or the freight or shipping, is that taxable to or from where you're shipping to? Uh, when we look within the system and move over to the total section, this is when that sales tax can be calculated within SAGE 100 itself. You'll see that the sales tax amount is uh, designated here um, within that sales order entry card. Very similar to APS and other cloud-based models out there. We have an admin console. It's that tax calculation engine that's working behind the scenes. Um, so you have access to all that very detailed information uh, within that section of our, our dashboard. And since Avalara is capturing all of that transactional data behind the scenes, we'll also be able to file and remit on our customer's behalf. Last year we filed over $4.4 billion in taxes and we filed just under 1 million returns. Um, we also like to note that in the event that you guys have additional systems where quotes or invoices are being generated, um, a different shopping cart, uh, some type of CRM, we house over 500 pre-built connectors. So all of that work is already completed. It makes for a very clean integration. Uh, a lot of the pushback or objections that we get when we talk to the Sage customer base is really regarding that implementation time. Hey, I don't have time to invest into this. It would be too big of a project. I'll let everyone know that Craig at Clearline set up this Sage connector in the demo environment in 10 minutes. Now, obviously, this is a demo environment. We didn't need to put a lot of information in, but it speaks volumes to how easy that process is. A typical customer is finished in less than 10 hours. So if this is an area of concern for you or your organization, it really shouldn't be. Um, anyone that's on the call today that moves forward with our solution will be offering an incentive tied to our go-live support staff who ensure that you're guided in the right direction through that implementation process. So at the end of the presentation in the post-survey, you know, please note that you'd like additional information and I'll be reaching out to you directly. So that's all for me and I will pass it over to Sean. Okay, Sean, Thank you, I John. All right, there we go. Hopefully everybody can see my screen. Um, thanks again, John. Thanks, Adrian. 
Um, and so basically uh, where Scanco and One Software Solution come into the supply chain is very focused on the distribution side of the equation. So order comes into Sage 100. Um, we are going to go through today just on taking that order, picking that order, validating everything um, that is picked, is on the order, your quantities are correct, and we're automating all of that stuff via iOS, via Android, out on the floor of the warehouse while the pick is actually occurring instead of uh, most customers that we deal with come from more of a manual approach where you're writing down uh, maybe on a pick sheet, and that pick sheet is going back up to the office. So everything that we're doing is in real time um, with Sage 100, like the other solutions that, that you've had a look at already today. Um, so I just, on the right side of my screen, I just wanted to give you kind of a, an example of some of our more popular uh, handheld devices that you can use out on the warehouse floor. So on the top here, you see an iPhone or an iPod actually in a scan sled uh, that basically turns your mobile device into a rugged barcode scanner that you can, you know, scan barcodes and, and do your shipping and receiving and all that good stuff with. Um, and then on the bottom, again, is more of an iOS device in a scan sled. Now, these sleds are offered for most of the iOS devices out there. So um, the sled will depend on which iOS device and, of course, as you get uh, closer to implementation, you know, you can decide on hardware. You can also mix and match. So you can, your users that are more comfortable on Android can use an Android device, um, and the users that are more comfortable on iOS can use an iOS device. Obviously, since they've used these devices, they use them all day, um, texting, email, the training with, with these apps is significantly reduced because your users are already familiar with using uh, mobile apps. So on the left side of my screen, I am actually running um, an iPad Pro today, so I'm just mirroring on my screen um, what my iPad is doing. So for today's purposes, I'm gonna stick with shipping. Um, I'm logged into the home screen now, so you can see we handle everything on the distribution side from receiving inventory in the physical count, um, the transfers with multi-bin, bin-to-bin transfers, um, so you can do pretty much automate all of the distribution side of what you're doing now manually um, within Sage 100. So this is just an app that is downloaded from um, iTunes from iOS. Uh, if you're running an Android device, it's in Google Play. Um, you can just type in scan code. This app is called Warehouse 100. Uh, we have a bunch of different apps in the App Store, but Warehouse 100 is, is our app specific for uh, Sage 100 distribution. So I will go into shipping, and we're going to take the order that Craig put in at the beginning, and we're going to basically go out, we're going to pick that order um, in shipping data entry within Sage 100. We're going to break it up into a couple of different boxes, and that information then will all be pushed to Starship to go out and, and check rates and actually do the shipment. So I will go into shipping. And the first prompt that you see here is batch number. So if you're using batches in shipping data entry, we will start with this prompt. Um, if you're not using batches, you won't see this prompt at all. I have two um, options. I can hit the pound sign in the upper right-hand corner of my iPad, and that's just going to go back to stage 100 and assign the next batch number. Um, I can also do a lookup here and just apply it to an existing batch that is out there. So I'm just going to hit the next uh, batch number, and you can see the next batch number is 47. So in shipping data entry, we're going to collect a shipper ID. So this um, is good if your users want to barcode a badge of some sort. Uh, they can just scan the barcode on their badge and get the shipper ID. And this allows us to track who is doing the shipment. So I'm just going to do shipper ID 1. And then our next prompt is sales order number. Now you've got options in every one of these input fields here. You can scan a barcode, you can obviously type in your entry with the on-screen keyboard, or you can do a lookup on the top right, the magnifying glass. So if I had a pick sheet, um, when you install the barcode module from Sage, 
you get the ability to add barcodes to your forms. So um, ideally, you would add the sales order number to the form uh, that goes down to the warehouse, and the guys in the warehouse just scan that sales order number. Um, I'm going to do a lookup, so I'll hit the, the magnifying glass in the top right, and you can see this is every order um, that is in Sage 100. Again, we're live, so when you hit the lookup, we go back to Sage, and we bring down the list of orders. So here's at the top of my screen here is the order that Craig started um, with Clear9. So I'm going to select that order. It validates that that's an actual order in my system, and it moves us to box. So it defaults with box one. I'm just going to enter through that, and we're going to, we're going to pack um, box one at this point. So at this point, I would go grab my item as a picker. I would go grab my item. I would scan the barcode on that item um, to validate that I'm picking the right item against the right sales order. I'm going to do a look up here, and what this will show you is all of the items on this order. So you can see that there was uh, the large crate. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to select that. And again, we're going to box one. It defaults to the warehouse um, that I am picking from. It, it defaults to the unit of measure that is on the sales order. So if you order in each's, we're going to want to ship in each's. Um, this is a non-multi-bin system that we're doing today. If you have um, multi-bin, obviously you would need to scan or select a bin that you're pulling the product from. Um, if you don't have bins activated, we just skip that prompt, and it tells you that you've got 10 on this order, and I've shipped zero so far. So I'm going to go ahead and ship five of these in box one. I'll ship my five, and then to increment the box number, I can go up to the top right. I just hit the box plus. It's going to move my box to box number two, and again, I can scan my next item, or I can do a lookup here. I'll just do a lookup. You can see that I've already picked five out of the ten. So I will go ahead and pick the remaining five and enter through this. So really, we validated that I'm shipping the right sales order. I've marked or tracked which uh, product went into which box and that each product was the correct product against the actual sales, or sales order that was input into Sage. And then I've collected the quantity. So everything is being validated in real time when I'm done with this. It goes back to um, shipping data entry. And again, you know, we have the ability to do uh, what you're doing in the distribution side. So something very similar for receiving physical count. All of those transactions can now be put on your iPad out on the warehouse floor versus trying to write this stuff down and have somebody type it in the stage later. So with that, I will pass it over to Matt at Starship who's going to take this order that we just did and show you how to how we're going to actually ship it. Thanks, Sean. Okay. Okay. Let's make sure I have control here. Just gonna close that sales order and open up Starship here. And actually, let me log in. Our session must have timed out. What is this? Okay. So as Sean mentioned, you know, with the one solution, you're gonna have the ability to actually do your pick and pack right from a handheld scanner. And the nice thing with the integration with One and Starship is that, you know, however I determine how that package is going to be, as Sean put, you know, five items in one box, five items in a second box, that's how it is going to bring it in, into Starship. I'm just going to get this open. So here is Starship, and in the upper left-hand side is my source document. Okay. So just as like Sean was mentioning with One, I can mainly type in my sales order number. If my is barcoded, I can most certainly have just a regular wedge type scanner hooked up to my shipping station. I can scan the sales order number or I have the lookup. Um, so in this case, I'm just manually type in that sales order. Okay. Once I put that in, what Starship is doing, it's just going out 
And again, it, it's retrieving that order that my picker um, used the scanner. Um, we actually had just two different databases here. So my order just brought this in as with one box, um, one item in one box. But again, you know, if this was two boxes, five in each, it would return it um, down here in this packaging view with the two boxes and five items in each box. But up top of my shipment, Starship automatically knows, based off the ship via, to select UPS as the carrier, select the service and billing type. Uh, Starship mappings, the way we map data fields, it, they can have one-to-many relationships. Um, in these map fields, you know, if this was a third-party shipment, this could help automate your third-party shipment by automatically pulling in customer's account information. Um, so really, your shippers don't have to worry about carrier service and billing type and filling in account information. Yeah. And then again, down in the packaging view is just the item to box detail. Uh, with Starship, if I click on the box, you know, we, you can set up custom boxes. Nice thing with using a custom box is it will automatically populate the dimensions for my shipper. Um, you know, if I'm doing pallets, I can include tier weights. And you know, if we have scale, a scale hooked up, I could have it automatically pull in the weight from the scale. Or I could click the get, get weight button. Um, if I wanted to, I could have Starship link to inventory maintenance inside Sage and actually just pull weights from the, that field. I already have my weight one, my box. Another option with Starship, if I go on the packaging here, is quantum view emails. Um, so UPS, in this case, it's UPS, they have a quantum view email that, you know, they'll send out an email that says, hey, Packages on its way, and it's really branded with UPS. Um, included with Starship is our e-notification program. Nice thing with e-notify is that you can build your brand awareness, create your own custom templates. You know, put your company logo on there, um, include coupon codes, hyperlink, get the customer right back to your website. Um, you know, a lot of different options, and of course, on that you can show customers item to box detail. You know, give them estimated delivery date of when the package should arrive. And of course, the the tracking numbers are hyperlinked, so you know it's going to help reduce those inbound calls of the customers calling you asking, "Hey, where's where's my shipment?" You know, you give them the hyperlink, they can go out and track right from UPS. Also, from here, my shipper can rate shop. Now, in this case, you know the order came from a website, so freight's already been charged, already been determined. Um, but if this was just a regular order, your shipper can actually click the rate shop screen or a little icon here or go to the rate shop tab. As you can see here, what Starship's going to do is make a call out to all the carriers that we have modules with and pull in your contracted price. I could see list price, but I can also see live negotiated contract prices with each carrier. Okay, and again, that's just making the call to the carrier's web services. So there's no doing pricing update. You know, if tomorrow UPS change and add a, a fuel surcharge, it would automatically be picked up and included. Okay. So from here, we can also do carrier rules uh, inside Starship. You can have Starship select the carrier automatically based off your rules. So maybe you want to do the least expensive, fastest delivery. Um, Starship will look through this database and automatically select that carrier for your shipper. Then on the charges tab, oops, just going to select the second day here. On the charges tab, we're going to show just a breakdown again of the charges, so I can see list contract. Um, inside Starship, you can also set up freight rules. So maybe you add a handling fee, maybe you offer free freight over X amount of dollars. Uh, you can easily add a freight rule for that, um, and it, it would be displayed here. So applied column is the either list or contract plus or minus any freight rules. Uh, freight rules can be plus um, percentages, min maxes, flat rates. It could be based off packages or based off the total shipment. Um, it can be based off customers. It can all go all the way down to line item detail. So maybe you have an oversized item. You can create a freight rule that says, hey, anytime item one, two, three is on an order, add $10 because it's oversized. In this case, my applied is zero because, again, this order is coming from a website where we already charge freight. Okay, So 
with Starship, I set up a write back rule that says, hey, if the order is coming from a website or you know, if the sales order already has a freight amount in the freight amount field, do not overwrite the freight. And that's what this is doing here. Total applied freight is set to zero. So it's not going to touch the freight amount when it creates the invoice. We also have address validation. Starship will validate ZIP plus four. We do use UPS, FedEx, and USPS's web services to make sure the address is valid. This will also automatically correct the commercial residential flag. So we're going to help save on those address correction fees as well as those commercial flag correction fees. And when my shipper is ready to ship, I kind of drag this out showing you all the options. Really, it's going to be pulling in the sales order number. It's going to come in pre-packaged. In this case, I don't even have to rate shop. So when I'm ready to ship, I'm going to click the Ship and Process button. So you can see here now it's updating Sage with all the shipping information. It made the call out to the carrier to get them the information. So I'm going to hit Ship and Process, get my shipping documents. Um, this is an example of what we call our smart label. The smart label is the packaging list and the shipping label that prints together on an 8.5 by 11 piece of paper. Uh, this is just an option. You know, most certainly can send your shipping label to a thermal printer. And with Starship, you also have the option to send the packaging list to a thermal printer as well. So ship and process. My shipper gets their shipping documents, throw the packaging list in the box, stick the label on the outside of the box, and they're ready to move on to their next order. Okay. So now I'm going to just jump into Sage. And we'll look at the invoice. Okay. So with the one solution, because it hit the shipping data entry files, Sage created the invoice. So I'm just going to go to my last invoice here. Okay. And as Craig mentioned, get this you know, message that the credit cards have already been pre-authorized. So here's the invoice for the sales order that we just shipped. On the header tab in the tracking table, here's my package tracking information. Because this is in Sage's tracking table, this is their hyperlink to track. So I can also, my customer service can track right from the invoice if they needed to. And then on the totals tab, as you can see, the freight amount, we did not write it back. You know, it was an option. We can set up those write back rules. So now the shipment's been picked, packed, and shipped out the door. And with that, I'm going to hand it back to Craig, and he can finish up updating the invoice and finish the whole process. Okay, great. Thanks, Matt. <clears throat> so at this point, yes, so what we would do here is we would um, just go ahead and print the invoice like normal. Uh, I'll just print them to defer to kind of get them out of the queue. And then we would go update our daily sales journals. So we'll go ahead and do that. I'll skip the, oh, is this the? Uh, yeah, it looks like it didn't right? close. Yeah, we can just close that. OK. And while Craig is updating, I, I do want to point out that APS, or American Payment Solutions, is also updating the portal simultaneously. Uh, for those of you that do not know whether or not you are qualifying transactions for level three, uh, it is in your best interest to find out, and we would be happy to provide you with a free analysis of your current rate. Uh, basically gives you a credit card processing 101, go through your statement, and help you understand where the fees are coming from and who's getting paid for what and also provide you with the level of savings that you are definitely uh, going to be pleasantly surprised with. We've actually been able to save most of our merchants from $2,000 to $112,000 a year simply by processing through Level 3. If you're interested in any of the enhancements that you've seen in today's webinar, let me know because through Level 3 processing, we can give you the savings that will help you with your budget or to put a budget in place to purchase any of these enhancements. Um, I'm going to go ahead and hand it right back over to you, Craig. Okay, good. So here we can see this is the order that uh, we placed originally, that the salesperson actually placed originally on behalf of their customer. 
this went into Sage and, and went through the you know the pick, pack, and ship process. And now we'll see that the order is complete. We actually have a tracking number that's back on the website, so the customer can go uh, track their package. Now at this point, the package hasn't really uh, left the building yet, so. Um, there's no information behind this one, but here's an older one that we can click on to see that it's actually, you know, a valid shipment with a UPS carrier. Okay. And if we go have a look at, say, the open invoices for this, this is invoice number 155, we can take a look at the transaction detail and we can see that there, there was the invoice and there was the payment courtesy of the credit card application and it's all paid off and ready to go. So we've kind of gone full circle from the customer or salesperson coming to the uh, customer facing portal, customer uh, doing self-service, you know, placing of orders, going through the entire automated workflow process from uh, Avatax calculation, uh, APS, credit card authorizations, you know, the one uh, warehouse management process, Starship shipping it, and now back on the website so the customer can see the information and it's all been automated. And so I think you can see that you know the whole workflow process leveraging all of that information within Sage 100 really makes the you know the workflow and makes it actually a lot easier um, and faster and cost reducing uh, to implement something like this. And with that, uh, I'll, I'll say thank you and I will turn it back over to Adrian uh, for questions. Adrian, as you're getting the polls ready, I just want to mention one last thing regarding um, American Payment Solutions. We do offer next day funding, which is literally 12-hour funding. If you batch out by 9 p.m. Eastern Time, you will have the funds available in your bank by 9 a.m. the next morning. Thank you, Adrian. Please go ahead and uh, proceed with the polls. Thank you so much, Patty and team. That was a fantastic presentation. I do, um, you should see my screen. Um, if you don't, I think that maybe the, I picked my wrong self. I did. I'm going to show my screen here. Show my screen. There, there we go. go. I should be back up and then there, exploded. Okay, so I know that we only have a minute or so left and we do have quite a few questions. I'm going to launch some polls as we go through the questions. There's only two polls, and I'm going to put the first one up there here. Um, if you're interested in learning more about any of the following, please click all that apply. You know, there's multiple choice here. And um, as I announce the questions, uh, go ahead and take a look at that. Thank you so much, audience, for taking the time to do that. And then it looks like we have a question from Chris. Chris says, can items be hidden over, can, can items be hidden other customers, i.e., we sell to CVS, but we do not want to let everybody see the item info or purchase it? And I think that's a question for you, Craig. Yeah, so the answer is yes. There's a number of ways that we, um, that we have to do that. Uh, first and foremost, we have to know which items apply to which customers, but certainly, and we've actually done things like that before, where uh, we have like uh, private branded items that are only sold to one or two customers. Certainly, we can do that. And we have another question from Chris: Can the items being picked be lot numbered? And I think Sean, that's a question for you. Great question, and absolutely. So whether you're using neither or your lot or your serialized. Um, the real-time connection, when you scan an item that has a lot number associated with it, we make you collect a lot. Um, same with serial. So, absolutely. And another question for you, Sean. Are the apps and sleds dependent on internet connection speed and connectivity? Uh, yes. Yeah, so we the app that I was just showing you, um, yeah, requires either a Wi-Fi connection. Um, you can also use, if you're using an iPhone or like I have a data plan on my iPad, um, the, the system is smart enough to roll from Wi-Fi if the Wi-Fi connection drops to your data plan. So the, you know, the important thing is that you ha still maintain that real-time feed to Sage 100, be it through Wi-Fi, um, if you don't have Wi-Fi, you can use your cell data card. So, yes. 
And then another question from Peter. Thank you so much, Peter. Um, for you, Sean, can you put rules to show shipments by customer and day? We have customers that require same-day shipping as opposed to others that have a longer ship window, um, i.e. Walmart, Target, drop ship, ship. Right, right. And yes, uh, most of the time um, we can accomplish that. We, we do a, a bunch of different things to, to get to that place. So, Adrian, I think you said Peter. Uh, Peter, if you want to reach out, you know, after the call, we'd be happy to set something up with you directly and go through some of your scenarios. But you can stage goods um, in a staging location for customers like Walmart. That's pretty um, straightforward um, across the board with, with customers to ship to Walmart, Target, et cetera. And then, um, you know, get make sure you get the same day orders out the same day. So lots of ways to do it. And um, thank you, Chris, for your question here. Um, Patty, Chris is asking for you to reach out to him. He's very interested in level three processing. So Chris, your question will be aligned to your name on the report that Patty gets. So she will reach out to you and answer any of your questions regarding level three. We have a question from Martin. Um, AM, uh, Amex rate for three tier is what? Patty. Martin, I'd have to have a consultant actually speak with you about the Amex rate. Um, if you'd like, we're going to see the question on the list that I receive, and I will call you as soon as the webinar concludes. And another question from Martin. Starship, what is the new basic system? The Matt? Co the cost? Um, it just, they're just asking about the new basic system for Starship. So I think that maybe the new release. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, the latest version is now 16.2 um, is out. And then, so Matt, could you give Martin a call after the presentation? Cause yeah. Because we want to make sure we we're clear on that yeah, you know, I'll question follow up and the him. answer. <laughs> and then, um, can InSync be used instead of EDI, uh, Martin? Thank you. Does anyone know that question or that answer? I, I think that's for Bob. Okay, I'll take it. So traditional EDI, when you have connectors and things like that, you know, not really. But there's, there's kind of like new ways to do EDI and there's web services and things like that. So it can certainly do web service integration with other company systems, which we have done. But for traditional, like, you know, X11 or whatever EDI, not really. We'd have to talk about what the specific requirements are, what the trading partners were, and all that kind of stuff. That's a fairly, well, it's a way more detailed question than we want to go into on the call, but we, we can talk to Martin um, offline. I think that's Perfect. Martin You'll from Paramedics, it. right? Um, I'm not sure. I just have Martin, uh, um, I have his last name here, and I always like to keep that. Okay. Um, but, sure. okay. but you'll see it on the report. Um, does one software work with uh, only with iOS. Bob, thank you. Uh, good question, Bob. No, we have um, iOS, Android, so you can run any Android device. Um, and then we have a cloud version of the application that I was showing you for Scanco Warehouse um, for older customers um, of ours that have been using scanning for a while, probably are using more of like a Windows mobile uh, traditional device out in the warehouse. So. Really, we can accommodate iOS, Android, and Windows. It would just be, you know, and you, again, you, you can run a mixture. You don't have to go all one OS out in the warehouse. So. Yeah, thank you, Sean, for that. Um, and we have a, a few more questions, and I realize we're five minutes over, everybody. Thank you so much for hanging in there to answer these questions. If you have to go, um, please, and you do have questions, please indicate them and we will definitely follow up and answer your question over the phone. Um, uh, Scott has a question here, Craig. How yeah. does this work with Google Analytics? I believe that's oh, for you. That's a good question. So actually, we have Google Analytics uh, baked in, and we actually have uh, the original version as well as the new Universal uh, baked in, and we actually do the e-commerce transactions and all that stuff automatically. So all we have to, basically to set it up, all we have to do is take your Google account number and plug it into our setup options. 
But we can also do Google Tag Manager and Google Ad Manager and double click and all of that fun stuff too. And then uh, Gary, thank you for your question. Instead of credit card paying on web ordering, can we have the order set up to invoice? That's a good question. Absolutely. So we have lots of B2B customers where we will set it up so that on-file customers um, orders don't have to use a credit card. In fact, there's a flag that we add to customer master file that determines whether or not a customer has to use a credit card. So you can have a mixture. So you can have uh, customers that you want to have them pay with a credit card because of whatever credit issues and other customers where the orders can just come in on terms. So absolutely. Perfect. And that was the second part of his question, Craig. Um, can it be set up to terms? So thank you, Gary, for that. And what type of security is there from the connection from the website to Sage? Thank you, Scott. Okay, it's actually it's inverse, and I'm glad somebody brought this up. So the way this application is designed is InSync is in control of what goes to the website and what comes from the website. So the InSync module running on the Sage server pushes information out and pulls information in. That communication is done over uh, an SSH tunnel with RSA uh, security. Okay, and then there's other things we do. For example, we lock the application down so that we don't even allow external application uh, access to the database. So all the information between the Sage server and the web server is done over an encrypted tunnel. And the, the website that? actually. Oh, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say the <clears throat> web. The website actually doesn't even know that Sage is even running. Right. So we should clarify yeah. that, right? So it's. It's, it's done in such a way that if, if your internet connection goes down, then orders will just queue up on the website and changes will just queue up inside of Sage. And when the connection comes back up, the queues will flush out. But you don't have to open up any holes in your firewall or anything like that. And then we have one last question here. If anybody has a question, just a reminder, uh, go ahead and click on that question mark button on the webinar pane. And I'm sure everybody here will hang around and answer your questions. And a dialog box will open up, and you can indicate your question, and we'll read them off. This is the last question, though, for now. Um, thank you, Scott. Are these all cloud-based applications? So, um, Sean, why don't we uh, let you start with that? Uh, so as far as ScanCo and One, um, we have a mixture. We, we definitely have a cloud um, version. We also, what I was showing you today with Scanco Warehouse 100 is uh, native to iOS and native to Android. So I guess, you know, yes on cloud and no if you, if you want to go more of a native on-prem. And um, how about you, Matt? Um, how, how is uh, Starship coming along on the cloud front? Uh, Do you guys Yeah, right now it's not supported, but we are working on it. And honestly, I don't have a, a timeline, but it is something in the works to make it compatible with a cloud base. And Avalair, I know you guys have a cloud solution. Is that correct, John? Yep, all of our solutions are cloud-based. And Patty, um, you guys are, do you guys have a cloud solution? Is all your technology in the cloud? Actually, um, as you notice, all of the information flows through to our portal. So that's basically the way we operate, through the APS portal. We follow, if there is a, a say, if an ERP system that's on the cloud, we integrate with that ERP system. Therefore, our process will continue to flow through, through our portal. I think what I'm hearing is that everyone will um, attempt to work the way the customer needs to work. And um, Craig, do you how's how's your all your information? Obviously, that's all. Is that all cloud? Yeah. So it's it's a web server, so um, it can be hosted at the hosting uh, provider of your choice. You, we can do Amazon EC2 hosting. If you if you choose to host it on site, you can certainly do so. But by its very nature, it works better in a data center. However, I think like most of the applications here, there's a cloud-based component, right? Which would be say you know the web server or the Avatax service. But then there's also a uh, like a client component that's going to be running back on the system. In our case, the InSync module is the client component that runs inside of Sage, but the web portal is running in the cloud, right? 
And thank you, audience, for all of you who took the time to answer this poll. Um, we uh, had a portion of the audience answer the poll, and that looks like 63% are interested in learning more about Clear 9, um, 13 Starship, 8% Avalara, 38% credit card processing, and 25% one software solution. Thank you, everyone, for taking time out of your day. We know it's hectic, and we really appreciate you spending this hour with us, a little over an hour now. Uh, but we had a lot of ground to cover, as you can see. So um, please, we will follow up with you, and we will send you an email with uh, the recording and everybody's contact information. And please feel free to reach out to any of uh, these presenters on the line. They all have years of experience, and they're all knowledgeable about the other solution and how their solution works with them. Um, so uh, we really look forward to hearing from you. And thank you, um, Craig, Sean, Patty, sure. Matt, for participating. Um, would you guys like to close with any remarks? This is Patty. I'd just like to challenge everyone to allow us to analyze your merchant statements. If we can't beat or match your current rate, we will pay you $500. Keep us in mind, American Payment Solutions. Thanks, Adrian, and thanks to the whole group. All right, everybody. Hey, have a great day. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Thanks.